hi hello how are we welcome back to my channel it's Anna so a little over a year ago now I first learned how to crochet as many of you know my mom was the one that got me into crocheting this blanket in the back is actually the blanket she made when she was learning how to crochet at my age in college she doesn't much anymore now but she had enough knowledge to get me started and from there I went to YouTube to figure out all the other stitches, how to make different things, as I think a lot of us do. A lot of people learn how to crochet or knit or do all these crafts from YouTube. So I figured, why don't I make a video as well? So this is my ultimate guide to learning how to crochet. In this video, I will include as much information as I can that I think is important when learning how to crochet. From yarn weight to different stitches, I'll be going over so many things in this video that it might get a little bit long and you might not need everything or be curious about everything. Maybe you already know some stuff and you're just learning some stitches or you wanna know what a gauge is, all that good stuff. So if that's you, no worries at all. I have split up this video into timestamps. They can be found in the description of this video and it also should appear on the red bar down below that you can see how long the video has been playing. So feel free to jump around, hit whatever you need, no worries there, but definitely make sure to stay until the end because we are partnering with Ribbler for a super awesome giveaway. I am so excited about this. Definitely make sure to stay till the end if you guys want to hear more about it, how to enter, and all of that good stuff. I also think it's really important that you have plenty of resources when learning how to start any craft, really. And I know that the way I teach may not be exactly what you need. And I don't take offense to that. That is no worries at all. Sometimes other things are easier to follow. Other people teach it in a way that's easier for you to understand. And all I want really is for you to start your crochet journey. So I have made a playlist. I will have it linked down below as well as up in the cards. And it is just a bunch of awesome videos that I've put together from other crocheters and artists on how to do the techniques that I'm talking about in today's video. So with all of that being said, I think we're ready to hop straight in um, and I'm really excited for you guys to join me. So welcome to Anna's ultimate guide of learning how to crochet, the beginnings. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is yarn weight and finding the right size hook for your yarn. I know this is kind of intimidating because a lot of these yarns have a lot of different names. So you'll hear someone say, oh, you need a worsted weight yarn or you need DK yarn. And you're just sort of sitting here like, uh, what? So I'm here to break it down for you. Let's get into this. So I'm going to be talking about seven different weights of yarn, starting with zero, which is the lace weight yarn. It is mainly known as lace weight, so that's the term that you'll hear most often. It is used for lace making, decorative trim, and amaragumi. And here is an example of some lace weight yarn that you might see in Joann's or online. Um, so very thin yarn, super pretty, super delicate for making lace, stunning. The next yarn is one, super fine yarn. This is also known as fingering yarn, sock yarn, or baby weight yarn. So it's a step up from zero, but still pretty thin. It is most often used for baby clothes, socks, or amaragumi. And here is an example of a number one weight yarn. So the next one is size two yarn, also known as fine weight. This is also known as sport weight yarn or baby weight yarn. This is heading towards the middle of the pack, a little bit thicker. It's most often used for baby clothes, socks, and amaragumi, similar to the last one, but it's gonna be a little bit heavier. It's a little bit thicker. And here is an example. Moving right on up, we have number three, which is lightweight yarn. This is also known as DK yarn, double knitting, um, also known as light worsted yarn. So if you ever hear someone talking about DK yarn, how something needs DK yarn, you're gonna be looking for a three lightweight yarn. It's often used for sweaters, lightweight garments, and here are a couple of examples of number three yarn. Um, I personally really like this yarn. It's lightweight, it's good for um, wanting to make lightweight sweaters, like I mentioned. So if you're looking to make a cute little summertime sweater and you don't want it to be super bulky, a number three is perfect. Number four yarn is medium weight yarn. This is a very popular one. I've noticed a lot of people use this yarn. It is also known as worsted weight yarn, Afghan or Aran, Aran, 
Erin, let me know. Weight yarn. Um, it is most often used for sweaters, for blankets, and for art outdoor wear, like hats and scarves. So if you want to make a cute little hat scarf mitten set, maybe you're looking for some medium weight yarn. Here are some examples. Um, a lot of patterns I've noticed use a medium weight yarn. Obviously not all by any means, but a lot of the ones I've used. So medium weight yarn is definitely a go-to for me. So now we're getting into the bigger sizes of yarn. The number five yarn is bulky weight yarn. This is also known as chunky yarn, craft yarn, or rug yarn. And it is most often used to make rugs, jackets, or heavier weight blankets. So if you're looking for something nice and cozy for the winter, you're gonna look for a number five yarn. Once again, here are some examples for you. And last, but certainly not least, or at least the last one we're going to talk about today, is number six, super bulky yarn. It is also known as roving yarn, and it is used to make super heavyweight blankets, sweaters, and rugs. Here are some examples. Super plush and lovely, um, and great for staying nice and cozy. So now you're probably like, okay, awesome. I know these yarns, I know some of the different names, I have a better understanding, but Anna, how do I figure out what hook to use? Let me show you. So on the back of any yarn that you are interested in, most likely there will be a indicator of which hook you should be using to get a certain gauge. This is going to be the hook that best fits that yarn based on its weight, its thickness, all that good stuff. So as you can see here, there is the back of a skein of yarn and you can see right here that there is a little indicator that says hey you should be using a 5.5 millimeter hook with this yarn it's medium weight this is a good hook size that you'll get a stitch that's not too tight but not too loose it makes for a good gauge at least the gauge that they indicate on the back so when in doubt always look at the back of your yarn to see what hook size you will need most often times at least I've seen they do provide information on which hook size to use. They also provide needle sizes if you're into knitting. So this is super easy to just figure out what do I need? What am I looking for? And it just it takes a lot of the worry out of it for you. So that is weight size and how to find the perfect hook for which yarn you're using. More videos on this will be linked down below. I hope this was helpful. And now we are on to gauge. Okay gauge. Gauge gets a little bit tricky at times. It is essentially the measure of how big your stitches are width and height. So if you have a really tight tension, you hold your, your yarn super tight as you crochet, your gauge will be tighter. Similarly, if you hold your yarn loose as you crochet, your gauge will be looser. So if your gauge is different dimensions than the gauge a pattern talks about, it may result in a pattern coming out differently for you. Maybe the sweater is a little bit bigger, the plush is a little bit smaller. It kind of depends on what pattern you're making and what pattern you're following. However, there is an easy way to make sure that you are on the right track and that your gauge matches what the pattern says it should. You can make something called a gauge swatch. So a gauge swatch essentially makes sure that your gauge that you are currently making matches what the pattern says it should be at. I have not made a gauge switch myself. I like to just go off on my own and hope for the best, I can't lie. So I've included multiple videos down below talking about it because I don't want to tell you guys wrong information. This is the last thing I wanna do and I think it's best to let someone who knows more talk about it beyond what I can. So gauge is essentially the measure of the width and the height of the stitches. And if you want to learn more about making a gauge stitch, make sure to check out that playlist down below. Now we are on to how to hold your yarn and your hook. So the way everyone holds their yarn and hook is different. You should be holding it in a way that feels natural to you. And because of that, it's going to differ from person to person. I'm going to show you guys how I hold mine right now. However, as I've mentioned like a million times by this point, there will be more examples linked down below because the way I hold it may not be comfortable for you and that's fine. You just wanna find something that is really natural for you and this is what I found for me that works. You'll find something for you that works. It'll feel like second nature, I promise, even if it feels a little awkward to begin with. So say the yarn is on your hook like this, you're about to start your project. Let me show you what I do to hold my yarn. So I go and I take my working yarn, I wrap it around my pinky like this. My pinky is just sort of holding it up I wrap my middle and my ring finger around the yarn 
and then I use my index finger right here as a guide. So once again, I'm going to show you guys. My pinky is holding it up like this. I wrap it around my middle and ring finger and my index finger is holding up the yarn connected to my hook. So as I've mentioned, this will be different from person to person. This is how I found is comfortable for me. Then when I'm working on my project, I use my index finger and my thumb, it's kind of hard to see, to hold the project intact on my hook so I don't have a lot of movement. And the yarn feeds over my middle finger, which is kind of unfortunate when you're filming YouTube videos and it looks like you're flipping everyone off. Um, but that's just how I found that it's comfortable, so I just kind of go with it. In terms of holding my hook, I hold it a little bit differently, I've heard, but I hold it essentially just like this. My pinky is always out. It's, fun fact, a hereditary thing. My dad always has his pinky out. I always have my pinky out. Um, so I just hold it like this. Ring finger up front, middle finger in the middle, um, index finger in the back, and my thumb just supporting on the back. And then say I were to get started, I just sort of hold it like this. And I know it's weird and awkward to see, I apologize, um, but I just hold it kind of like this. Uh, that's how I hold my hook and my yarn. If this doesn't suit you, no problem. You will fall into your own rhythm in due time. Just find what's comfortable for you and that's really all that matters. So now we are on to the slip knot and how to chain. So the slip knot and the chain, two very important things in starting a lot of crochet projects. So I am going to insert some clips about how to do the slip knot and chain in just a moment, but I'm also going to show you this is the abbreviation for chain. It's just CH. This will come in handy when you are um, reading patterns because a lot of the time in patterns they abbreviate chain to CH as they do with other um, stitches as we go along and I will explain those. So now I'm going to insert some clips showing you guys how to make your slip knot and a chain. So you're going to want to start by putting your yarn between your thumb and your index finger and you're going to wrap it around your index finger and your middle finger twice and you'll make this cross like you see right here. We're going to do that one more time. So put the yarn between your thumb and your index finger and wrap it once and then twice around your index and middle finger creating this cross. So to make the slip knot, you're going to take your hook and underneath that first strand of yarn that's closest to your nail bed, you're going to go under, lift up your hook, and grab that second strand with the actual hook part. So it's going to look something like this. All you need to do is let go and it'll look something like this on your hook. And to make it an actual slip knot, you're just going to pull both your working yarn and the tail of your yarn taut, just like this. So to make a chain, you already have that slip knot on your hook, and what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over. That basically means you're just going to grab some of your working yarn with your hook, and you're going to pull it straight through that loop. And you're going to do that however many times you need that the pattern calls for or that you require. And it is important to remember that the loop on your hook does not count as a chain. So here you can see I have four chained, now I have five chained, not including what is on my hook. And here are what chains look like up close. So that's essentially all you guys need to do. If you want further explanation, make sure to click on the playlist I have linked down below. Okay, so the slip stitch. Sometimes used as its own stitch when in a pattern, sometimes used as a part of a ribbing technique, sometimes used to put two pieces of something together when in a pattern. Slip stitch is super versatile. You can use it for a bunch of different things. I often use it to put two things together. So if you come to the end of a round in a pattern and you need to bring together the last stitch and the first stitch, you'll just use a slip stitch and tie it together before moving on to your next row. It is a super helpful stitch in crochet. It is abbreviated to SLST slip stitch and it'll be indicated in most patterns as such. So now here is a little demonstration about how to do a slip stitch. So to do a slip stitch, all you have to do is in the second chain from your hook, you're going to yarn over, grab some yarn. As you can see, you'll now have two loops on your hook and you'll just carry that yarn through to that first loop. I'm going to show you again here. So you're going to yarn over two loops on your hook, pull that second loop through the first loop. And that's essentially how you do a slip knot.
Okay, awesome. You guys know how to do the slip stitch. Now we're gonna move on to how to do the single crochet. So a single crochet is one of the shorter stitches in crocheting. Um, it is super versatile, super easy to learn, and is honestly one of my favorites. I use single crochet in a lot of my own patterns just because it is honestly really great. It looks really nice. So SC single crochet is one of the most versatile stitches you can use. Super lovely, super easy to learn. And now I'm going to insert a little clip of how to do it so you guys can follow along with me. Okay, to do a single crochet, as you can see here, I've chained 15 if you wanna follow along. You're gonna need to make sure that you do the single crochet in the second chain from your hook. So skipping that first one like I'm showing you here, you're gonna do your single crochet into that second chain quick because I just mentioned it you are going to start your single crochet in the second chain from your hook which means that you should chain an additional one to whatever number you need I wanted 15 in a row 15 single crochets so I chained 16 because I skipped one so make sure you chain an additional one to whatever you're doing if you're doing a row of single crochets so all you're gonna need to do is put your hook into that second chain Yarn over, grab some yarn. You're now going to have two loops of yarn on your hook. You're gonna once again yarn over with your working yarn and pull straight through both of those loops and you should have one loop on your hook again. So we're gonna do that one more time. You're just gonna continue on down your chains till you get to the end. So we're going to put our hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over once again and pull through both of those loops. Once you get to the end, you're going to have to chain one before turning your piece. You always work from right to left if you're right-handed. So as you can see, I'm chaining one. I'm about to turn my piece and do my next row. And you're just going to do your next single crochet into that first stitch as you can see me doing right here. Awesome, so now that we have finished that, we are going to move on to the double crochet. So the double crochet is a bit of a taller stitch. This is another really simple, basic baseline stitch you will see in so many patterns. Super easy to learn, very similar to the single crochet. Um, it is abbreviated as DC, double crochet. And here I will insert a clip demonstrating how to do it so you guys can follow along. So just like the single crochet, we started by chaining 15. But for the double crochet, you're going to need to chain an additional three. So for a single crochet, you'll need to chain an additional one. So we have 16, now we have 18. And on the fourth chain from your hook, you're going to yarn over first, put your hook through that fourth chain, yarn over and pull through. So you'll have three loops on your hook this time. Then you're going to yarn over again, just like we did with the single crochet, as you can see me doing right here. Then you're gonna pull through only two, yarn over again, and pull through the remaining two. So we're gonna do that one more time. So you're gonna yarn over, put your hook through the next chain, yarn over again, you'll have three loops on your hook. Pull through two of those loops, yarn over again, and pull through the remaining two. Then when you get to the end, we're just yarning over, making those double crochets. And then similarly to the single crochet, we are going to chain before we start the next row. So as we finish this one, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to chain two. So for a single crochet, you chain one. For a double crochet, you will chain two. Then you will turn your work and then start into that first section next, starting the next row. Awesome. So we've talked about the double crochet, super cool. Now we're gonna move on to the next tallest stitch, the treble crochet. So treble crochet, also known as triple crochet, is abbreviated with a TC, and it is a bit of a looser stitch, I would say. 
The holes are a little bit bigger. It is definitely the tallest stitch I'm talking about today. And it's once again, really easy to understand after you've learned a double and single crochet. So now I'm gonna pop in a little video telling you guys how to do it. You guys can follow along um, and yeah. So once again, we are going to start with 15 chains and this time we are going to add an additional four chains just as we did previously, adding the additional chains so then we can start five chains from the hook. So as you can see right here, I'm counting out and finding my fifth. And then I'm going to yarn over once, I'm going to yarn over twice, and then I'm going to insert my hook into that fifth chain. So similarly to double crochet, we were yarned over once. This time for a triple crochet, we are yarning over twice, putting our hook through, pulling through some yarn, and you should now have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Then you're going to yarn over again and pull through another two and yarn over one last time and pull through the final two. And now you have a triple crochet. So we're gonna do that one more time. Yarn over once, yarn over twice, insert your hook into the next chain space, yarn over and pull through, you'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, pull through another two, and pull through your final two. Now we are finishing up our row of treble crochets. So as you can see, we are just finishing this and we are going to once again chain like we did with a single and double crochet. However, this time we are going to chain three before inserting the hook back into the next row. So chaining three, turning our work and doing our first triple crochet into the next row. Awesome. So now that we've learned triple crochet, those are all the stitches I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Um, pretty basic, pretty easy to understand. A lot of them build on top of one another and a lot of beginner patterns will be using these stitches. So hopefully this was a really nice outline for you guys to have when starting your crochet journey. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to increase. So when you're making a pattern, you may need to increase as you go. So say you're making a sleeve for a sweater. You have the cuff, but you don't want it to be that size all the way down. You need to make it bigger so it'll go out and make a puffy sleeve. Depending on the pattern will depend what an increase looks like, what you need it for, I should say. But nonetheless, this is how you do an increase. So I sewed this down so you guys can see the process a little bit better. I'm using single crochets, but feel free to use whatever stitch you want. But notice as I'm getting to the end of this row, this is where I want my increase. So I'm inserting my hook as I'm going to do a normal single crochet into that last stitch. But what's different to do an increase is that you're going to do two stitches per one space. So I'm going to put my hook back into that same space I just did my last single crochet and I'm going to just have two stitches per one spot. Now, because I've finished this row, I'm going to chain one as normal, turn my work. I accidentally did an extra chain, so don't do like what I did, but I'm going to turn my work, and instead of getting to the end and doing my increase, I'm going to start with my increase. So as you can see, I'm going to insert my hook and do one single crochet, and then I'm going to insert it again and do a second single crochet in the same stitch. That is what is going to give you an increase. So now that you know how to do an increase, we are going to move on to how to do a decrease. So a decrease is another super important thing to know when talking about patterns and techniques you'll need for patterns. So we've already talked about increase and how you add two stitches into one stitch, but now I'm going to show you guys how you go from two stitches into one stitch when you're making a decrease. So once again, I've slowed this down. I'm doing a single crochet and now I have two spaces left in this row. So I'm going to insert my hook and start a single crochet, but instead of yarning over and finishing it, I'm going to keep those two loops on my hook and I'm going to insert my hook into the second space. So now I'm going to have a total of three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through all three. So you're basically taking two stitches and combining it to one. So I'm gonna show you one more time. We're gonna chain one. We are going to turn our work and I'll show you one more time.
So I'm inserting my hook into this stitch, not finishing my single crochet by yarning over and pulling through again, but instead entering the second stitch, pulling through like I'm starting another single crochet, yarning over and pulling through all three loops on my hook. And as you can see, that's starting to create a really nice decrease from the increase that we started before. And you just continue on your row until you come back and reach the decrease again. Awesome, so now we know increase and decrease. This is super helpful when you're making a bunch of different patterns. And I hope that these were helpful demonstrations. If you need any more help, make sure to check out that playlist down below. There are more videos down there talking about how to do increasing and decreasing. So now we are going to talk about the magic circle. The magic circle can get a little bit confusing at times and it is a way for you to start a circular project. A lot of amurigumi I have made starts with a magic circle. Say you're making a circular coaster. You want it to look like a circle. You can't get that from a chain necessarily. So you'll want to start with a magic circle. This definitely takes practice. I remember sitting in my family room like close to tears because I was so frustrated. So hopefully this demonstration is straightforward enough for you guys to understand and follow along with me. But if not, check out that playlist down below for more helpful tips and videos on how to do a magic circle. So to create the magic circle, we're going to start it similarly to how we started a slip knot. So you're gonna create that same X that you did before, holding the yarn between your index and thumb and you're going to pull through just as you did with a slip knot. We're gonna do that one more time so you can follow along with me. So under that first yarn, grabbing the second strand of yarn and holding it, not letting go of the yarn that you have in your fingers. Instead, you're going to yarn over and grab some of that working yarn and pull through the loop that you started on your hook. And as you can see, this is what creates a circle. We're gonna do this one more time. So I'm just gonna undo this one. Create that X, just like I did right here. Put your hook underneath that first strand of yarn. Grab that second strand of yarn with the hook, but don't let go of the yarn to create a slip knot. Instead, you're going to yarn over and grab some of the working yarn. You're going to pull through that loop you created and that should start your magic circle. So from here, you can do whatever stitches inside that you want to do. I'm gonna do some single crochets and you just do it straight into the circle like I'm showing you here. And what I'm showing you here now is a stitch marker. You can use this, you can use a safety pin. I've used bobby pins in the past, but it's a great way to keep your place when you're working in the round like you do with a magic circle. It's just, I found much easier to make sure that you um, reach your full end point. So now I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to do some single crochets until I'm satisfied with how many I have. And whenever you're done, all you need to do is take that short end, not your working yarn, but the short end of the yarn and you just pull and it should decrease that circle. And all that you have left is your stitches in the round. So you're gonna take off that stitch marker, that's how you know that's the first one that you started with, and you can either slip stitch them together or you can single crochet them together. So right here I'm slip stitching it together, where you guys know how to do a slip stitch, just pull it together and I would chain one and continue into my next round, or you can do a single crochet where you single crochet those two stitches together like I am now and continue working in the round like that. Okay guys, I am so, 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 so excited to announce that I have partnered with Ribbler for today's video to bring you guys a super awesome giveaway of three different patterns by three awesome artists. Three lucky winners will have the chance to win today's patterns that I talk about and I am so excited to show you guys what they are. So let me tell you guys a little bit about Ribbler, who they are, what they do, for those of you who don't know. So Ribbler is a completely online hub for essentially every pattern you're ever looking for. From crochet to knitting to sewing, Ribbler has so many patterns, like thousands to choose from. It is just the coolest website with so many awesome patterns to choose from. I'm popping in super quick just to let you guys know that another great thing about Ribbler is the fact that all of their patterns are not only amazing, but you can access them literally anywhere. So anywhere you can get Ribbler, 
be it on your iPhone, with an app, on your computer, anywhere, you have access to all of your patterns, super accessible and super interactive. It is awesome because then you create your own like pattern library of all these patterns that you've bought and downloaded and it is so cool and I just wanted to toss that in there. And the great thing is they do a lot to support indie artists. So a bunch of artists that I know partner with Ribbler and have a lot of their patterns on there. Probably a lot that you guys would know as well. And they're just super awesome in everything that they do. I go check out Ribbler all the time for patterns whenever I'm looking for something new to create. Um, and they're just really, really cool. And I'm literally so excited to be partnering with them today to be giving away these three patterns that I'm going to talk about right now. So the first pattern is by MJ's Off The Hook Designs and it is her Mosaic Mug Rugs. This pattern is so cute. It is beginner friendly and it is great as a first pattern to try because it practices a lot of the techniques that I talk about here and you get something at the end of it that you can use because I mean, I don't know about you, but I literally always need coasters. So super awesome pattern. Very excited about this one. Next pattern is by Ohana Craft Amaragumi. Amaragumi is a type of crochet that you've probably seen a lot, but never knew the name of. A lot of plushes and stuffed animals are Amaragumi, and this pattern is literally so cute. It is a little balloon dog, and... It is completely crocheted, as you can see. It's beginner friendly, super soft, super cuddly, and I think it is the cutest thing in the world. So once again, super excited about this pattern. I think it's a lovely first project pattern to try out, especially if you're interested in potentially making plushes and making amaragumi. So I think this is a really great beginner pattern. And finally, if you're getting into crochet to make your own clothes, that's definitely what I gravitate towards. This pattern is from I Knit That, but don't let the name fool you. This is the crochet version of her infamous patchwork sweater. So I love, love this pattern. You guys have seen me make it. You've seen me wear my sweater a million times. I absolutely love this pattern. It is beginner friendly, super easy to follow. And at the end of it, you have this beautiful sweater. I think this is the perfect pattern to begin with. So three absolutely amazing patterns, three absolutely amazing artists. They will all be linked down below. Please go support them, give them some love because their stuff is so awesome. I really love these patterns and I'm so excited for you guys to try them out. So now you're probably like, Anna, these are great. These are lovely. How do we enter? Let me tell you. All you need to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to Ribbler's YouTube channel, which I will have linked down below. Follow my crochet Instagram at crochet by AK. I will have it on the screen as well as linked down below. And in the comments, just tell me something you're grateful for. It can be big, it can be small. I just really want to spread some love and happiness. Um, I love doing this over on my Instagram and I wanna start doing it here a little more. So down below, make sure to comment something you're grateful for. Also make sure to include your Twitter handle or your Instagram handle. So if you win, I have a way to contact you. So once again, all you need to do is subscribe to me, subscribe to Ribbler's YouTube channel, follow my crochet account on Instagram, and comment something down below that you are grateful for. Big, little, anything in between. And don't forget to comment your Twitter or your Instagram handle for a way to contact you. And that's it, that's all. So I am so excited to get these patterns into your hands. It is going to be so super awesome. Um, and yeah, oh, guys, I'm so excited. Thank you once again to Ribbler for partnering with me. Make sure to go give so much love to those artists that I mentioned earlier. Like I said, all linked down below. And Ribbler's website is also linked down below if you want to go check them out as well. I cannot recommend all of these more. All right, friends, on that note, I think that is all I have for today's video. I really hope this was helpful. I hope I was able to cover a lot of things that you guys were curious about with starting crochet and I hope this creates a really nice baseline for you guys to build off of. If you have any questions leave them down below and I will do the best I can to get to all of them and answer them and make sure to check out that playlist that I've made if you need any additional resources or help with any of the things I've talked about today. And of course make sure to enter the giveaway with Ribbler. All of the rules will be linked down below as well as you can find it at the timestamp in the bar down below. Make sure you enter, check out Ribbler, check out the artists that we're partnering with to do this giveaway. 
I am so excited about it. That is all I have for today's video. If you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe for some more good vibes and hit that post notification bell if you want to know every single time I post a brand new video. I post every Thursday. I love you all so, 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 so much. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week with a brand new video. Bye everybody.